Hello to my lovely art fam. Today, we are busting out the sketchbook and hopefully this provides you with some creative ideas and inspiration for the summer. It is midsummer. I've been reading your comments and first of all, sketchbook videos are the most requested videos on my channel. <laughs> so that's cool because this is what sounds fun this week. But second of all, I read your comments and many of you are saying that you are least inspired during the summer. So I think it's time that we do some more fun art ideas. Art block is not fun. So I hope that if you are in an art rut that this video helps you. Anyway, let's get started. Feel free to bust out your sketchbook or any art thing and create with me. We can draw together or paint together because I usually do both in these videos. Let's start this sketchbook ideas video with something that's relatively easy and that anybody could do. So first we're starting by tracing our hand in the middle of our sketchbook page. If your hand is too big for the page, you can use a piece of paper. It's okay. Now you can see I'm doing dashed lines along the perimeter of my hand. This gives it a cool sort of glowing effect and it kind of makes it feel like the hand is popping off the page. Now there's all this space around it, so we're gonna fill it with a bunch of scribbles. Now, if you've watched my previous sketchbook idea videos, I have done stuff with scribbles in the past, but this one is a little more advanced, but still pretty easy. Now what I'm doing for this is I am choosing some warm colors for the background. So I chose yellow, orange, and red, and each little space between a scribbled line gets colored in. So I would repeat the color a few times and then I'd switch to a different color. And what I'm trying to do is go to the edges of the page with the darker colors and then it will look like the hand is really glowing. Now after you've completely filled the page and colored in all these scribbles, you can stop here and have a cool white glowing hand, or you can do some funky fun pattern inside your hand like what I'm doing and make your page super colorful. I chose a bunch of blue dashed lines because it was a complimentary color with all the orange and I felt like it just made the page seem happier. So here we go. This is the first idea in today's sketchbook video. I hope you like it. Well, this has been really fun so far. But I think before we continue, we should talk about today's sponsor, which is Audible. I really love Audible as an artist because, you know, when I am creating, my eyes are so devoted to the piece of work that I'm either painting or drawing, but you know, my ears are free. So for instance, for this video here, while you are watching this, it has been mostly voiceovered because I'm busy listening to some audiobooks on Audible. So right now I'm listening to The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, and it's just so nice because I can just pop on my headphones, listen here, and then later if I have to run to the grocery store, it syncs up, it knows where I am, I can listen in my car, and then say I'm on my computer checking my emails, it still syncs up, picks up where I left off. So amazing. So amazing. So if you join Audible, you're gonna get one free audiobook every single month, and you're gonna get full access to the Audible Plus catalog. And that's probably my favorite part about Audible is the Audible Plus catalog because there are tons and tons of podcasts, audiobooks, guided sleep tracks to help you sleep, and guided meditation. 
It's just really wonderful. I actually found one of my favorite childhood books, The Secret Garden on there the other day. So that was pretty cool. So I've been using Audible for about two years now and I wish I had joined sooner because honestly, I just feel like I've gotten so much out of it. And if you want to get a lot out of Audible too, you can enjoy a 30 day free trial by going to audible.com slash Mira, or you can text Mira to 500 500. Once again, that is audible.com slash Mira, or you can text Mira to 500 500. And with that free trial, I hope you can find a really cool audiobook that takes you to some other universe or you get to explore some historical moment in time or maybe binge listen to a really cool podcast from Audible Plus's catalog. Thank you so much Audible for sponsoring today's video and for just providing me with so much entertainment over the years. You guys are awesome. Don't forget it. Have you ever just stared at your art supplies? but you don't know what to draw. It can be so frustrating wanting to use all those new supplies. Wait a second, why don't we draw our art supplies? Ooh, that sounds fun. Now let's put a spin on this and not stress out over everything looking perfect, looking realistic, and let's kind of turn our art supplies into characters and cute little cartoons. So you can see here, I am almost done drawing this paintbrush and it's pretty stress-free here. I did some shading, but mostly I wanted it to look cute and cuddly. So of course I added eyes and a mouth and cute little blush. Now I'm moving on to a marker and this is very obviously inspired by the marker that I'm holding. I thought it would be fun to make a scribble coming out of the marker and uh, sort of bring it to life. And again, I added eyes. Now let's move on to, hmm, a pencil case perhaps? Yeah. Now, I thought about making this one a cute little character too, but then I decided to make it more accurate for my life. So naturally, I wrote art supply hoarder on my pencil case because that's exactly what I am. Does anybody else have that issue out there? That's the comment of the day. Let me know. So yeah, I pretty much drew all the types of art supplies that I typically use. This one is a giant colored pencil with a cute face on it because it just makes art supplies look so fun. And then a watercolor palette. And here we go. Here's our art supplies. If you love gaming, then you will probably love this idea. Basically, what you're going to do is take a symbol from a game that you really love and draw it on a page. So that can be a video game, a board game, maybe a role playing game like Dungeons and Dragons. Hey, yeah. OK, well, since we just talked about Dungeons and Dragons, let me just get into what I'm drawing. I am drawing a D20 because I do play Dungeons and Dragons and it's really fun. My husband and I play in a campaign with our friends Scott and Leah and I've been wanting a D20 that looks like this. However, I am waiting for it to come back in stock right now. <laughs> I think it's fun to sort of let go with art though and draw the things that we love and celebrate our other hobbies within this hobby. So I hope that this one inspires you to do the same. It's fun to look back on because we are humans and we change, which means sometimes through life, our hobbies change too. So maybe one day you'll look through your sketchbook and 
be reminded of the things that you were once into and maybe still are. Here's the finished D20. I hope you like it. For this idea, you're gonna need some paint. And I got this idea from TikTok. I'm not really sure who made it. It's kind of hard to know, but you just put blobs in a line and scrape it down the page like this. Kind of brings back that 90s art kit thing with the sponge, like the rainbow painting thing, you know? Anyway, this one was more for fun. I honestly didn't care for how it looked, but I cared about the process. I just wanted something to take my mind off things and enjoy the moment. Some artsy exploration. <laughs> this is probably the silliest thing in my entire sketchbooks, but sometimes you just have to try the weird stuff you see on TikTok. And I didn't feel like trying to make it look super aesthetically pleasing. I just wanted the sensory experience. So yeah, this is just a good illustration to show that your sketchbook is a place of experimentation. So you are allowed to experiment, make weird stuff like this for the experience. And who cares how it looks? I honestly don't care for how this looks but it was fun to create and I'll probably do it again sometime in my life. <laughs> You've probably seen this clip in my last video, but I decided to draw 100 eyes on a sketchbook spread and I figured it was worth mentioning here because it is great practice if you want to get better at something or draw the same thing in a bunch of different styles. I highly recommend this. You can do it with other objects too. It doesn't have to be an eye. However, I really enjoyed this. And I learned after I posted this video that this is apparently a trend on YouTube. Jess Carp created it. So if you want to see her do a hundred of eyes or just other things, definitely check out her channel. This was a really fun challenge though, and it's very time consuming, but if you wanna give it a go, it makes your sketchbook look really cool when you finish. Do you have old artwork laying around? Maybe some doodles, they're all on loose pages and you don't know what to do with it? Mine typically accumulate in a basket or a junk drawer, never to be seen again. So today I am doing something different and I am collaging them all over my sketchbook page. Some of these things don't necessarily go together, but I think that's why I like this. It's like artsy chaos on a page. I just love the chaotic energy and all the colors and just remembering different periods of time when all of these things were created. So yeah, if you're unorganized with your art or you shove your stuff in a junk drawer, Highly recommend this idea. This idea here is a little more serious than most in my sketchbook videos, but I wanted to share it with you in case you're somebody who struggles with anxiety and you worry about things and you can't get those things off your mind then I hope this one is a very liberating art project for you. What I'm doing here is just drawing some cartoony waves with a bunch of wavy lines within them. And later we're going to color in all those little wavy lines. And that is kind of the stress relief part of this page, but something cool is coming.
So what I'm doing is writing words on the top of these waves. And these words are the anxieties in my own life. So we're gonna have a vulnerable moment. You can see the things that I worry about because I may be positive in my videos, but that does not mean my life isn't hard. I do worry about things. For instance, deadlines with work, house hunting while uh, being in this crazy market, losing loved ones, feeling like I can't help everybody because I can't be everywhere. Uh, some of these are very defeating feelings and I'm just telling you my anxieties because you're gonna see them on the page anyway. But the reason why I'm doing this page is because it's sort of a leave your worries in the waves. And it's a nice way to see your anxieties in front of you and acknowledge that they're there but symbolically, water is always moving. No wave just stays there. Um, and the things that we worry about also will not just stay there. Um, everything is temporary. And sometimes it's hard to remember that. But letting things go in art can be so helpful for our real life problems. So this page isn't super advanced in nature it is more simple because i want it to be something that does not stress you out if you're trying to lower your anxiety but for all of you people out there who do have anxiety i just want you to know that whatever you're going through matters and even if it doesn't seem like it's a big thing it matters to you and it is valid. Leave your worries in the waves. All right, I decided to save the best for last. This was by far my favorite idea of the video. And I like to save the best for last because not everybody stays till the end. So all you special folks out there who are still with me, you get to see the coolest one in my book anyway. I don't know, maybe you'll like another one better. So I laid down some gesso and an underpainting with acrylic paint. And now I'm doing some charcoal, but you might be wondering, what are you doing though? Well, first of all, if you do not have the supplies that I am using, have no fear, use whatever you want. The point of this idea is to recreate a famous piece of art in time to kind of learn other artists' styles, maybe learn color theory, or just so you can have a famous piece of your own, but like you made it and not them, but they, they actually made it. You get it? Okay. Anyway, I am painting The Houses of Parliament by Claude Monet. This was painted in 1903. I chose this one because the colors, they just looked so soft yet bright and beautiful. And I just had to try it. <laughs> I also just wanted to play around with impressionism a little bit in my sketchbook and kind of see how it went. So that's what I did. I kind of glazed the page to lighten the colors a little bit, um, but yeah, it was really fun to try this. And I do have to say, at this point, once I finished it, I did feel like I learned a lot from recreating a famous piece of art. So I highly recommend this if you're looking to improve your painting skills or your drawing skills or your understanding of color theory, it is so incredibly helpful. So that concludes all of the sketchbook ideas for this video. As you guys know, I'm always working on sketchbook videos behind the scenes. One of my favorite things about YouTube is just to give you guys ideas for your own sketchbooks or just 
try to inspire you to keep creating, even if it's silly stuff like tracing your hand on a page and scribbling all around it, you know? It's, it's nice just to know that we can create. It doesn't have to be masterpiece. It can just be whatever we want. Silly things, serious things like studies like this or confronting your anxiety. Uh, yeah, it's nice to journey through that together on my channel, so. I hope this video helped you. And if you want any more sketchbook ideas, feel free to check out the list that I made in my description. It's there to help you. I'll try to compile a bunch of them for you. Also, can I just say, we are getting close to filling this sketchbook. I honestly didn't think I was this close to filling it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I will see you next week in another video. We have some cool stuff coming and I've been working ahead behind the scenes because something really cool is coming up probably in September. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, bye.